Hi everyone, this is a field trip report from the Cleveland Wastewater Treatment Plant. This report is a part of assessment for the course Water Treatment Fundamental, which is held by Dr. Kimley. Let's have a look at the plant location map. The treatment process has five main steps. The first step is in the press where suspended solid particles are removed. The next step is bioreactor, where nutrients removal occur. Then we go to clarifier, and after that disinfection happens by chlorine gas. The last step is effluent discharging effluent discharge to the lake or using for irrigation purpose. Um, incoming to the plant, we've got a total of about six megalitres per day. Now, that doesn't occur on average. It actually has a diurnal flow pattern. So you would imagine you get up at six o'clock in the morning, you go to the toilet, you have a shower, you have breakfast. So there's a lot more flow between six and eight. And during the day, People don't use showers and toilets as much. And then at night time, people come home, shower, have a feed. Uh, basically, it comes up again. So we have this diurnal flow. Now we're going to see what happened in the treatment plant process. We guided by Dr. Scott. He explains in details all the process in the plant. I think there might be four or five different pump stations that are connected to the inlet works. Uh, so basically you've got the sewage uh, catch, catchment network, so you flush your toilet, it all gravity down, or it gets pumped to a uh, low point where there's a wet well, and then from the wet well it gets pumped to the, the treatment plant. Now we're going to see what happens in each step of process in details. The first location was inlet works. Um, so this is the first step. Uh, basically removing all the solids. The first question was about main components to in in the We've basically got, I think, two channels. So we've got two screens. Um, and up there, that's basically the process. So you told me here is just the screen, so there are no grid chambers here? We've got a vortex, uh, grit removal. It basically, it's like a cyclone. Uh, just, yeah, basically rotates around and all the, the heavy particles settle out and the liquid goes off. We just wonder what are the capacities of the plant? The design is uh, 38,000 pp. Uh, so it was designed in, I think, 2001 uh, for 38,000 pp. They used a uh, wastewater um, flow uh, per capita of about 250 litres per day. The next system, as I mentioned, is bioreactor where nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus are removed. The more exciting part is the bioreactor. Uh, so basically it's an anaerobic reactor. At some point, uh, basically the oxida oxidation ditch starts up the end there. And so all down that reactor is aerobic. But this one has uh, mechanical mixes which introduces the oxygen. Where you can see it's all turbulent. That's because there's a, um, there's a mechanical the aerator starts up the end there, and so down this zone will be all anoxic. So anoxic is uh, it's basically for denitrification. Uh, it's in the absence of oxygen. Uh, so you've got nitrate, beats of nitrate and carbon. During the anoxic zone, you react your nitrate with the, uh, the carbon, uh, and you basically reduce the, the nitri nitrogen levels uh, that way got a certain bacteria, the heterotrophic bacteria. Uh, so before the denitrifiers in the anoxic zone, before they can go to work, you have to convert the, um, the, the ammonia into nitrate. And so that occurs in the aerobic zone. So basically there's another type of bacteria, autotrophic bacteria, that uses the oxygen uh, with CO2 um, to convert ammonia into nitrate. Uh, so in the aerobic zone, ammonia goes to nitrate, 
and then in the anoxic, because it, it all goes around in circles. So basically after the aerobic zone, it comes back into the anoxic zone. Um, and then the ammonia, well, the nitrate that's formed in the aerobic zone is uh, reduced to nitrogen gas, and then it's released into the atmosphere. And the wastewater comes in here, which is all anaerobic. It's anaerobic phosphorus release in the anaerobic zone. And then in the aerobic zone, you've got phosphorus uptake. And then overall, you're, you're basically uptaking more phosphorus into your, uh, it basically goes into the, the cell, the bacterial cell. And then we add in the alum uh, to basically to get down to low levels of phosphorus. Uh, so basically the alum reacts with the phosphate uh, to produce aluminium phosphate, uh, which, is, which precipitates and then because we've got biological growth within the system, uh, we, we have to have a, like a bleed. So we basically bleed out the, a bit of the bugs every day. Uh, so we basically waste, um, waste the bugs. Um, and at the same time we're wasting the bugs, we're also taking phosphorus out of the system. Uh, so the aluminium phosphate comes out with that as well. One of my team members asked me how often the clarifier clean. Yeah, so basically the BOD will be used in the denitrification zone. Uh, so the heterotrophic bacteria, uh, it converts uh, nitrate into nitrogen gas, and it also consumes carbon that will consume your BOD. And then in the aerobic, so that's why you have the anoxic zone first, because you want to use the incoming, um, the incoming carbon. And if you have the aerobic zone first, you would just oxidize all your carbon. Um, and that's not a good thing. So you're using your carbon for denitrification. Uh, and then any that's left over will be polished in your, will be uh, basically oxidized in your aerobic zone. Um, because we want to get uh, clean uh, treated water out of the system, we, we have another bleed out of the bioreactor, which goes to the clarifiers. Um, so basically, um, yeah, so we go to the clarifier, we settle out the sludge, um, and then the, I guess the, the supernatant um, basically goes off to the creek or to irrigation and that's your treated wastewater and then the, the basically the settled sludge comes back into the system. I think it probably mixes at this point, but mixes with the incoming um, wastewater. People are interested to know what are the level of nutrients going down? Mike, it's your question too. So let's see his answer. We're achieving less than 10 uh, milligrams per litre of BOD. Uh, I think our license is 3 milligrams of nitrogen or 5 milligrams of nitrogen. Uh, one of those, and I think phosphorus is less than 2 or less than 3. Um, and so we're, we're achieving it all pretty, pretty easily. Then we went to clarifier. The first thing you like to know was the process. Uh, you want to maintain your biomass within the system and you also want to have a clear uh, effluent that you can put uh, into the creek. Uh, so basically the clarifier does that. The velocity that you're feeding at is less than your settling velocity. Uh, so basically you're you know, pumping it in but at the same time it's settling faster than you're pumping it in, the velocity. And so it actually settles down to the bottom. Uh, and then you've got your uh, clarified effluent. Um, you could potentially have your sludge, so there's a sludge blanket within the clarifier. So you could potentially have it lifting up uh, because you're, you're feeding at a higher rate than it can settle. So your feed velocity is higher than the settling velocity, in which case you could have um, yeah, basically sludge rising and coming, going out with your effluent, uh, which is bad in two ways. Uh, bad because your effluent will have a high so suspended solids. Uh, you'll actually put a higher demand on your chlorine uh, because you have to achieve uh, very low levels of fecal coliforms. Um, so you'll, yeah, basically you've got sludge going out. And there's also issues around the, um, you want to maintain your, your sludge within the reactor. So you have to, yeah, so if you're putting all your sludge out to the creek, you're just going to reduce uh, what biomass you have in the reactor. Yeah, so we 
We've got the, the sludge from the bomb it goes back to the bioreactor. We have a, like a bleed stream, which goes to the, I think we've got some belt filter presses. So just over here in that building, we've got, um, I think it's belt filter press. And then we've got a, I think this is the, where they store it. So it's a sludge storage bin. Uh, and then they've got a conveyor, which I guess when they rock up with a truck, they can empty it out. One of my team members asked me, but so, since the soils will be having some water and some pathogenic materials, how do you treat that and dispose it? Uh, yeah, so primary sedimentation, you would, uh, so you take the slides, I think they put it into a digester. Okay. So they digest it down and yeah, they kill off all the, the bacteria with the digestion. One of my team members asked me for the activated slide systems. Yep. One of the parameters for the design is the ratio for for food to microbes ratio. Uh, so how you go about yeah. the estimation of the ratio? Yeah, uh, well I think it's, so I think we're pretty good with this plant. Okay. Um, so I think we've got like six to eight uh, COD to nitrogen ratio. Uh, but if you had uh, like a lesser ratio, like four or something, you might have to add in external carbon because you don't have enough carbon to denitrify. And so, yeah, they'll add in, you know, ethanol, methanol, uh, acetate, molasses, uh, any of those sort of um, carbon sources. One of my team members asked me, how often is this not returned? So, taking the slide back to the bar reactor, how often do you get it? Uh, I think it's continuous. So, there's a pump at the bottom, which basically pumps back to the, the inlet works. Uh, not the inlet works, the, the inlet to the bar reactor. So it combines with the raw waste water. You've got the raw waste water which combines with your return activated sludge and then that goes into your anaerobic zone. So what happens like when the concentration of the microbes increases too much, how do you yeah, go about so that one? There's issues around that. So, uh, so you actually maintain your um, so solids within your reactor and within your clarifier by wasting. So you, like it, it will grow if you, if you don't waste it, it just continuously grow and you get very high concentrations. Uh, I think we're targeting three to 4,000 milligrams per litre um, in the bioreactor. And so how do we maintain that is we've got a, we'll basically we return the sludge and at the same time we waste sludge as well. So waste sludge over to the, the belt filter press. Um, so from here we go to the chlorine contact, but basically we're dosing in chlorine, chlorine gas. Um, to basically disinfect the, the treated wastewater. Um, and we've got a chlorine contact tank because we have to uh, maintain a certain contact between the chlorine and the wastewater for the disinfection to occur. For the design, it's 9.5 megalitres a day. The chlorine contact tank, I think it's about 400 uh, kilolitres. Um, so that's about, uh, I think it's about half, oh no, it's about an hour. Is there any residual? But yeah, uh, our free chlorine uh, in the effluent, um, we got the data, it's, it's less than detection level, um, and the total chlorine is about point, point 0.3. There is. Uh, in terms of the, the wastewater, we have to disinfect because uh, it's got viruses and pathogens and you know, nasty stuff. Uh, so we've basically got the chlorine contact tank. Um, I think the chlorine, yeah, the chlorine gas is in there. Um, well, hopefully the, the bacteria takes out all the organics. Um, I know there's issues around disinfection byproducts. Um, so any organics may react with the, the chlorine to produce uh, potentially carcinogenic byproduct. Then our team members asked a few questions privately and here are the assets we got. About six meg on average, and three go to, goes to the creek, the other three goes to a lagoon. And from that lagoon, what we're doing at night time is we irrigate about um, 24 hectares. We just spray irrigate. And the spray irrigation allows for evaporative processes to take place. Uh, and some groundwater infiltration. So we're not giving all the water to the waterway. We're actually sort of trying to discharge some of it by uh, evapotranspiration, uh, which is always a good thing. 
Uh, there's opportunities for recycling as well. We haven't done it yet, but over the back here, there's an industrial estate. And there's four concrete batch plants where uh, we could discharge some wastewater or sell them some effort. This is Scott Milan from the Field Team. It was a great experience to see a facility which was different and modern compared to conventional plants. Our team members would like to thank Dr. Kelly for providing us this great opportunity and of course special thanks go to